Pigel and Noso do not combine with each other because they are two distinct names. The sheriff's head of the veil, as well as the veil and the flesh of a human corpse, do not combine with each other to transfer tumor, even when even like the more, more lenient aspect of the two. Food that contracted tumor from an avatuma and food that contracted tumor from contracted tumor from a vlad atuma combine with each other to transfer tumor like the more more, um, more lenient aspect of the two. All foods combine with one another to disqualify one's body with half a paras and the rest. For the food of the two meals are an Arab to human, for the eggs viam to transfer the tumor of food, for the dried things viam for carrying out of a domain on the Sabbath, and for the dates viam on Yom Kippur. All beverages combine with one another to disqualify one's body with a rabias and for a fill um, and for a fill of a cheek on Yom Kippur. Ola and Chayim on the on the vineyard combine with each other. Reb Shimon says they do not combine. Cloth and sack, sack and hide, and hide and a mat combine with one another. And Reb Shimon says since they are fit to contract too much as a seed. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's start with uh, Perik Hey. If somebody benefits uh, the equivalent of a pruta from hektesh, so even though he didn't cause any any loss to the object, and it was something that uh, that is like subject to to loss, it's it's something that can wear down if you if you're using it normally, but he he, he didn't wear it down at all. Okay. Nonetheless, Rabbi Akiva says if he got it's all about the benefits. Says says Rabbi Akiva. Okay, if you got it, a pruta's pruta's worth of benefit from it, that's meila. Some just disagree, say called the yesh pagam. Anything where where we, where it is susceptible to uh, to to be, being um, worn down. There's or, deterioration, deterioration. Calls they call it here. Yeah, deterioration. Thank you. Anything that's subject to deterioration, lo mal ache gone. There's no there's no meila until he actually until he actually makes it uh, until he actually wears it down, okay. And if there's something that doesn't deteriorate when you use it, then as soon as he's benefited a, a pruta's worth, then he's committed meila. And as usual, the uh, the locha follows uh, follows chachamim that uh, uh, that it, it it depends on the object itself. So how so how does this work out? Nasna katla bit savara. So it's, let's say a woman who's got a, a necklace that's hektesh. And a, a necklace doesn't wear out from uh, from being worn. It's just, uh, you know, you wear it and it looks pretty. Um, okay. Kevin uh, um, Tabas um, Yada or a ring on her finger. Well, she drank out of the. Um, uh, out of a cup that was uh, that was uh, made of uh, gold um, from from the from that that belonged to the temple. So Kevin uh, Smala, then as soon as uh, she benefits, um, as if she if she benefits as much as a as much as a um, a prota, then immediately she is uh, she she is guilty of meila. Okay. However, lavash bechaluk. Let's say for some reason they switched to a man uh, in this particular case, um, and uh, and now we're talking about a guy who wears a shirt, kisa mm -hmm. or he wore a talus, bikaba uh, or he took an axe and he started using it. Um, then he's uh, then this, these are things that are subject to being worn out because you know clothing wears out as you as you wear it. Okay, lo ma'al gom. He has not committed me'ila unless he causes a pruta's worth of deterioration in the object itself. Okay, and gets the pruta's worth of value. Talash min hakatas Um, if he um, if he um, uh, if he um, talash min hakatas. If if he takes a hakatas animal that's alive and he and he plucks hair out of it, ma'al lo ma'al gom. Um, there's not there's no meila unless he actually causes uh, unless he actually causes a, a deterioration. Okay, mesa, but once it's once the animal is already dead and the and the hair has got nothing has uh, has got nothing to do with the animal. You're not causing any. Um, there's there's no value to the hair in any case, and there's no pagam in in taking the hair out. So therefore, we're not looking at pagam anymore. Once pagam is off the table, then all we're looking at is is hana. Did he benefit from it? And if the answer is yes, then he's done meila straight away. 
How would he benefit from the hair plucked out of the dead animal? How would he benefit? He took, from... it, in, he took it and stuffed a cushion with it or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. Whatever you, you want to do with it. Right. Okay. Nene, nene bechachatzi prutta or pagam bechachatzi prutta. Now, what happens if you if there was an object that is subject to deterioration, and he had a benefit of half a prutta and did a and and caused a loss of half a prutta? That isn't going to. So I'll just jump to the to the to the conclusion and say that did not that is not called mele. You don't join the the loss and the benefit. Okay. Or he's got two separate objects, one of which he got a, a pruta of value from without causing a pruta of damage, and the other one he caused a pruta of damage to without getting any without getting any benefit. Those two again do not come combine. It has to be all in one uh, all on one object. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's not uh, it's not considered meila. Yeah. Um, Mishnah There is uh, there is no such thing as doing meila after after another meila with with things that have been declared hektesh. Ella behem or Kleisharis, except for the animal and for Kleisharis. Okay, how is this so? Um Rachav al Gabe Bahema. So there was an animal that was that was declared Hektesh for the for the for the Mizbayach, and he and he rode on it. And then his friend came and said, Hey, that's nice, let me also ride on this animal. So, uh, okay. Vish um sorry, Bachavero Barachav. Shasabakus shell shazahav. Um, he he used a, um, a a temple cup of gold, and drank from it. And his friend came and also drank from it. Both of them have committed meila. Okay. Oh, talash min a or talash. He plucked from a from a chattas animal, and and his friend came and plucked from a chattas animal. Okay. Kulan malu. Everyone here has committed meila. Okay. Why? Okay, but uh, if it was. Uh, uh, if it was something else that belonged to Hektesh, so for example, he um, he dedicated a donkey a donkey for for Bedeka Bias, oh. and then he went and rode on the donkey. Now, as soon as he rides on that donkey, he not in, in the same movement as he commits the meila, he also uh, causes the donkey to return to the state of Chulin, and now he has to pay for the value of the donkey and the and and the extra fifth because of the meila. Okay, but the donkey has been has now been desanctified. So when it's bedek habayis, there's the it can be desanctified. Uh, similarly, uh, so so basically, uh, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Omer calls she'en lo pidyon if it cannot be redeemed. Yesh bo moel achamoel. That's your that's your rule. Is that if something is sanctified and it stays sanctified and there's no such thing as doing um, uh, as doing a pidyon on it. Then, then you can have moil achamoil. Then you can have uh, two one, uh, two people coming one after the other, uh, using it, benefiting from it, and and getting and getting meila. So, uh, but if it's but if it's got a pigeon, then the act of uh, of using it is uh, effectively effectively an illicit pigeon, but it, but a, a pigeon nonetheless. So it, so it, so it goes out to chulin, and the, and a second person coming and misusing it can no longer be chayav for meila. Um, there's a commentary over here. Um, uh, here so, so according to Rebbe, there is Meil after Meil, but with, with Kod Shem is uh, that were an unblemished, that then later became blemished. Okay, and they were shechted before they got, uh, before they were redeemed. So Rebbe says, since it's impossible to put to to evaluate them because they've already been shechted, therefore there's no pidyon, and the and the and the din is that they she uh, kavru that they have to be that they have to be buried, but and anything that that but something that doesn't have a pidyon that has a meila after meila. But Chachamim say no, um, say no. Since they do not need to be evaluated at all, in in that case of the of the of the the kodshin that was shechted that developed a mum, and then and then was shechted before they were before they were redeemed, there's still no meila after meila. Whereas Rebbe holds that there is. 
Okay, that's just a little subtle point over there. It's not in the in the main body of the Mishnah, but uh, just for the the subtlety of 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 Rebbe coming uh, that the, uh, and explaining the Gemara explains about Rebbe that he does have this subtle machlokus with the with the Tanakama over here. Okay. Okay, let's do Chazaras. I'll have done. Yeah. The service of Kedoshim Kedoshim affects the offering both leniently and stringently, but the blood service of Kedoshim Kalim affects it only stringently. How so? Regarding Kedoshim uh, Kedoshim, before the throwing of the blood on the altar, he sacked sacrificial parts and the meat are subject to Me'ila. After the throwing of the blood, the sacrificial parts are still subject to Me'ila, but the meat is not subject to, meat is not subject to Me'ila. For both the sacrificial parts and for the meat, one is now liable for pigle, Nosser, and Tome. In the case of Kedosh Kedoshim, it only affects the offering stringently. How so? Regarding Kedoshim Kedoshim, before the throwing of the blood, neither the sacrificial parts nor the meat is subject to Me'ila. After the throwing of the blood, the sacrificial parts are now subject to Me'ila, but the meat is still not subject to Me'ila. For both the sacrificial parts and for the meat, now is it, one is now liable for Pigol, Nosa, and Tome. It emerges that the blood service of Kedoshim Kedoshim affects the offering both leniently and stringently, but the blood service of Kedoshim Kalim affects it only stringently. The buried katos is subject to Me'ila from when it is consecrated. Once it undergoes Me'ila, it becomes prepared to be disqualified through contact with the Tevel Yom, through contact with Melchus and or through remaining past its time. Once its blood is sprinkled on the altar, one is liable on its account for pickle nosa or tummy and is no longer subject to me'ila. The bird oler is subject to me'ila from when it is consecrated. Once it undergoes malika, it becomes prepared to be disqualified through contact with the tabu yo, through contact with the makusa kapurum, or through remaining past its time. Once he squeezes out his blood against the altar, one is liable on its account for pickle nosa and tome, and it remains subject to me'ila until it goes to the place of the ashes. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, okay, Arach in Ches Zion. See, in these times, there was no such thing as a simple barbecue. There was no, what? Huh? There was no such thing as a simple barbecue in these times. You know. Why do you say that? <laughs> well, it's a lot of work over here, you know. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, we have um, a person can declare Karim his consecrated animals, be they Kedoshim kedosh, or Kedoshim Kalim. Kalim. If it is a neta, he gives the worth of the animal. If it is a adava, he gives his benefit to him. If one has said this ox shall be an oval offering, we value how much mercy will be willing to give for this ox to offer it as an ola offering that is not that he is not obligated to bring. A bechor, whether it is unblemished or blemished, one may declare a cherem. How do they redeem it? The redeemers evaluate how, how much a person would be willing to give for his bechor that it will be given to his daughter's son or his daughter's or his sister's son. The Bismil says one verse says you shall consecrate, while another verse says you may not consecrate. It is impossible to say consecrate, for it is already stated that one may not consecrate. It is similarly impossible to say not to consecrate, for it has already been stated consecrate. Therefore, you must now say you may consecrate it as a consecration of assessment, but you may not consecrate it as a consecration to the altar. <laughs> One who sells his field at a time when the yobel is enforced is not permitted to redeem it because before two years, as it is said, according to the crop years, shall he sell it to you. If it was a year of wind blast, a yellowing, or if it was a shemitah year, or if it is not included for him in the count. If he plowed it or let it lie fallow, it is included for him in the count. But Elazar says if he sold it to him before Rosh Hashanah, when it was full of produce, he may garner from it three crops in two years. If he has sold it in the first I'm sorry, if he has sold it to the first one for mana and the first one then sold it to the second one for 200 zuz, he reckoned it, reckons only with the first one, as it is said, to the man whom he sold it. If he sold it to the first one for two handful zuz, and the first one he sold to the second one for mana, he reckons only with the latter, as it is said, to the man, that is, to the man occupying it. He may not sell a distant field in order to redeem one nearby, or a poor one in order to redeem a good one. He may not borrow in order to redeem it, nor may he redeem by halves. But in the case of the temple treasury, all um, all of these are permitted, and this is the stringency of the common man over the temple. Menachos, gemel, gemel. If two menach offerings in which Kamitsa had been not been formed with mixed together, if it is impossible to form Kamitsa in each by itself, they are valid. If not, they are invalid. If Chomets mixed with a menach offering in which Kamitsa had not been performed, it is not burned on the altar, but if he burnt it in the one but if he burnt it, 
The one in which Kamitsa has been performed is credit, credit to the owner, and the one in which Kamitsa has not been performed is not credit to the owner. If it's Chomets mixed with his remainder of the remainder of another mincha offering, he should not burn it on the altar, but if he did burn it, it is credited to the owner. If the Chomets became Tame and he offered it to the Sith, become accepted for acceptance. If it went out and he offered it, the Sith does not affect acceptance. For the Sith affects acceptance for which that is Tame, but not for that which it went out. Um, I have a question about this. Okay. Yes. We keep running into this thing, and I keep forgetting to ask you. The Sith was something that, that the Kohen got on war. That's correct. So what do we mean when we say the, the Sith accepts it or doesn't accept it? So How the, does that work? The Sith is, me, is mechaper on the Tuma. Uh, so uh -huh. if, something, if something was brought to the Tuma, um, then uh, then the, the fact that the, we said that the fact that the Kohen Gadol was out there wearing the Tzitz, um means that, okay, you shouldn't have brought it, the Tumah, but it was brought and it's Mechaper, and you don't have to bring another Korban. So uh -huh. that's the, what we, we say, the, the Tzitz is Mechaper. Okay, so Kohen is really Mechaper. It's, it's the Kohen, knows it, but it's, it's saying the Tzitz, that the Tzitz has some magical power to say, yeah, all right, take this away, you know. Yeah, the, so, so right, so that's, I, I'm... I'm I think I, I think there's also the nafkamina that if uh, if the kohen gadol was not wearing the tits, then it wouldn't uh, then then you would have to bring the korban again. Ah, okay, all right, I better understand now. Okay, thank you. Just by the way, also I notice you, when you're pronouncing it, you're saying the chametz, which chametz is is a different thing from the comets. The comets is the is the three fingers full. Right, right, I, I know. I'll save that for Pesach. <laughs> If its remainder became Tomei burnt or lost according to the rule of El El Eliezer, it is valid. But according to the rule of Yishua Rishua, it is invalid. If it was not placed in a sacred vessel, it is invalid. If Shimon validates it, if he burnt its comet twice, it is invalid. It is valid. Okay. Oh, also, hey. The comet, the comet is in smaller part is essential to the validity of its larger part. For the for the Isaron, its smaller part is essential to the validity of its larger part. For wine, its smaller part is essential to the validity of the larger part. For oil, its smaller part is essential to the validity of the larger part. The flour and the oil are essential to the validity of each other. And the comet and the frankincense are essential to the validity of each other. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's it. Aaron Sarah Mika. Message on the message. Uh I'll call back. Baba Messiah. Yo. Okay, we have uh, Al Khat. If one finds evaluation documents, support documents, police accounts, certificates, refusals, selection certificates, or any act of court, he should return them. If one finds any document in a leather bag or in a case, a roll of documents, or a bundle from one, he should return them to the creditor. If one found the document among his documents and he does not know which who gave it to him, he must remain until Eliyahu comes. If there are receipts among them, he should do what is written in the receipts. Some funds belong. To, uh, some fines. Some fines belong to him, and some he must renounce. These fines belong to him. If he found scattered produce, scattered money, sell small sheaves in a public domain, round cakes of pressed figs, loaves of a baker's bread, strings of fish, pieces of metal, fleeces of wood brought from their country, bundles of flax or tongues of purple wood, these belong to him. These are the words of a mayor. If Yehuda says anything containing something unusual must be announced, how? He found a round cake and a potato and a bacha was inside it, or a loaf and money was inside it. If Shimon ben Elazar says all new utensils need not be announced. These must be announced. If he found produce in a vessel, a vessel just as it is, money in a purse or a purse just as it is, piles of produce, piles of money, three coins upon the small, other on the other, small sheaves in a private domain, loaves of homemade bread, fleeces of wood taken from the craftsman workshop, jugs of wine or jugs of oil, these must be announced. Okay. Next. <laughs> these must be removed on Pesach. Babylonian Kutak. Medium, uh, medium beer, I do mean vinegar, Egyptian uh, sea salt, dyers grow out the cook stove and scribes paste. From Elias says also women's cosmetics. This is the general rule. Whatever is in a species of grain must be removed on Pesach. These are in a category of a prohibition, but they are not subject to chaos. When dough remains in the grooves of a kneading trough, if there is as much as an olive vine in one place, he must remove it. 
But if not, it is not because of its insignificance. And likewise, regarding the laws of contamination, if he objects to it and he interposes, but if he defies, desires to remain, then it is a trough, as a trough. Remaining deaf, deaf dough is if, in, if there is dough similar to it that has already been leavened, it is forbidden. How do we separate kala from contaminated dough on the festival? The Elias says she should not designate it with the name of kala until it is baked. The Meshua ben Sarah says, let it be cast into the old water. I remember the Meshua says, this is not the heaven leaven concerning which we are warned. It shall not be seen and it shall not be found. But he separates it and leaves it until the evening. And if it leavens, it leavens. Okay. okay. And finally, Nida. The blood of a Nida and the flesh of a corpse convey tumor. When they are moist, and they convey they tumor. When they are dry, but when they are dry, uh, I'm sorry, this piece is sticking here. But when they are dry, by the seam of admission, the phlegm of a nazab, the saliva of a zab, a sheriff's, an animal carcass, and semen convey tumor when they are moist. But they do not convey tumor when they are dry. But if they can be soaked in water and revert back to the way they were, they convey tumor when they are wet and they convey tumor when they are dry. And for how long must they be soaked? In warm water for 24 hours. Rabbi Yosha says, Regarding dry flesh of a corpse, they're not going to be soaked and revert back to what it was. It is Tahor. Regarding a sheritz that was found in an alley, it renders Tahor, it renders Tahor's tummy relaxed. Until one can say, I checked this alley and there was no sheritz in it, or until the alley was less swept. Any similar, similarly, and with similarly regard to a blood stain that was found on a tunic, it conveys tumor retroactively until the time about which. One can say, I checked this tunic and it did not have a bloodstain on it or until the time it was last laundered. If it conveys tumor, whether it's wet or dry, dry, whether Shimon says once it, it, that it is dry, it conveys tumor, it can be right actively, it can be right back to being wet. All bloodstains that come from Rechem are Tahor. Rebu, Rehu, and Rehu, and Tome, because the residents of Rechem are converted to air. Blood stains that come from uh, among non-Jews are Tahor, and blood stains that come from among Jews are from Kuthins. The mayor rules, uh, the mayor rules them Tame, but the Kuthins rule them Tahor because Kuthins are not subject regarding their blood stains. And we are done. Good. Oh, thank sure. you very much for letting us finish this. Okay. 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 So I, I'm, I'm used to getting home earlier now, so I'll just so I'll give you a message. Okay. Later. I know the same was earlier, but like seven ten or something. Yeah, like that. super. That, that's excellent. The earlier, the better for me. Then, thank you. Uh, Cheers. Bye.